All right, so um, there's different architectures that you can use for a database management system. We'll talk about um, how we developed from teleprocessing to file server architecture and then to our client server architecture. All right, so first there's teleprocessing. Here you have one, C one computer with one CPU that handles everything. Um, all the processing, everything, and these are called like dumb terminals that really um, don't have any, they don't have a CPU, they don't do anything, they're just all well, using um, what what um, the information and every, all the, the access of everything that this single central processing unit, that this single server, that the single computer has everything on it. Um, obviously, that's um, a lot of big burden for this computer that does everything and everyone is always um, using so it's not a very good approach. I mean, it was it's good before you had anything else, but there's better ways to do it. So then we get into the file server architecture, which does it a little differently. Here, um, each workstation has its ha has its own CPU and it does its own processing um, of the applications and has their own d database management system. But the database, the files are all on a file server. So it's kind of like we split it up a little instead of having all dumb terminals and, a and one computer that has everything. Here, they each have their own database management system, their own applications, but then all the files are on this server that they access. Now, there's a lot of disadvantages with this approach. Um, there's a lot of traffic because all of the files are on that one computer. There's a lot of network tra traffic. Also, if you're going to put a database management system on every single computer, um, that's not that's a disadvantage as well, is to have a big database management system on everything. And that's not the way we do it now. And I'm not going to make you have a database management system on each of your computers, but we'll talk about we'll talk about that. So now we get into a traditional two-tier client server architecture. So here we have um, the client, and the client has the user interface and applications, but the server is what holds the database and the database management system. And, and that's what, what we're going to do. We're going to have, um, the, we have our, we'll have a database management system on a server and, <clears throat> and, and the database, and then the computers itself will manage the interface and the applications. So here, you can see a little picture of it. You have the client has the interface um, with the logic, but the server has um, the database management system, the database access. And this way, we don't have a database management system on every computer. Um, and, 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 but, but, the, but it's, not, it's not a dumb terminal. The computer has the application, the logic, and everything there as well. So you can read this on your own, a summary of, of the differences between the client, what the client does and what a server does. Um, so the server will have our database um, and, and the client will have the application logic and, and all of that. Now, what are the advantages of this approach? Um, performance is much better. The client and the server are not on the same computer. They have different CPUs. Um, and therefore, different things can be processed at the same time. The client can process the application, the server can take care of the database. It's, it's much better performance-wise. Um, the harder, of course, it's also going to be cheaper and more cost-efficient um, because the server is the only one that has the database management system um, and the, have to have the power and, and be able to, to contain the whole database management system. There's also three-tier client-server architecture that I'll talk about um, because if you have a lot of users, so you still have it like here, this fat client um, where there's still a lot happening on the client's machine. So if, if you're you have a lot of users and you have a, a lot happening, you can still have a, a lot on one computer. So a three-layer approach divides it instead of two layers. We're going to have.